So in the past 23 years of my life, I have learned there's nothing more horrifying than the pain staking embarrassment of getting rejected by the person of your affection. And if you think that you've embarrassed yourselves more times than I have, believe me, you haven't. This is coming from a person who had trouble finding one date in high school and then went to college with about 300 other homosexual men who were all viable options and it was like getting thrown into a pit of lions and those lions were just so incredibly sexy. But I promised myself going into my freshman year of college that I wasn't going to embarrass myself. I wasn't going to get hung up on any stupid boys. I was just gonna focus on my schoolwork, my academics, making new friends, and then... I got to college. The first week of college was orientation week, and it was a time where you got the chance to get to know your fellow classmates, find out who was in your major, who was on your floor, and I moved into the seventh floor of my dorm building, and it was a very open environment. Everyone left their doors open while they were unpacking. People got to, were just coming in and out, getting to know each other, and as I was walking down the hall, I saw the most beautiful specimen of a man hanging up an X-Men poster in his bedroom, and in my mind, I thought, Wow, there's my soulmate. I found him, first week of college, just my luck. Where I went to college was actually kind of weird because it had a very strong concentration of LGBT students. I mean, I kind of figured going into school that I would be introduced to a few other people who were more open-minded and, you know, coming out of the closet, but Emerson College was just so abundantly homosexual. And I could tell right off the bat that this kid was also Gay. So like the close-minded 17-year-old going into his freshman year of college, I thought, I'm a homosexual, he's a homosexual, we are gonna get together. I spent the entirety of orientation week telling my newfound friends all about this beautiful man who I had the biggest crush on and I just wanted to kiss him. That was my entire goal of orientation week was just to be able to touch my face to his face. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted out of school. If I had gotten that by the end of orientation week, the $40,000 a year of tuition would have been worth it. And he and I actually ended up hanging out in a similar group of friends because we were all on the same floor. We were all looking to get to know each other and we ended up spending a lot of time together. We would do group outings with everybody else on our floor. We would hang out late at night playing Mario Kart. We bonded over Grey's Anatomy. I just thought, this was the guy for me. Of course, I didn't know any better and I didn't realize that the people that you're into aren't always going to be into you too, so later on during orientation week, I kind of started to get the vibe that maybe he wasn't into me. And wouldn't you know it, one of the school-sanctioned orientation events was something called the Date Doctor. This was a motivational speaker who the college brought in to kind of teach us about the trials and tribulations of dating in the adult world. Keep in mind that this man had apparently been divorced two or three times already when he was lecturing us, so I didn't, I didn't think that I should take anything he said too seriously, but he was just so good at what he did, and one of the main points that he stressed during his entire two-hour lecture to us was that you had to be the fat penguin. What he meant by that was you had to be the person to break the ice. If you were interested in somebody, you had to be the one to go for it. I mean, there they're not going to know if you're into them if you never explicitly say it. Keep in mind, I, I, I kind of took this a little too seriously, but I'll get to that in just a second. But as he was speaking to us, I was thinking the entire time, oh my god, this is what I've been doing wrong. I haven't let it be known that this was my intention. I felt like I was putting myself in the friend zone with this guy, and I had to make it explicitly clear that I was interested in him. After the event was over, we all ended up going back to the dorm rooms, and he and I actually struck up a conversation about how we were both so bad at being the fat penguin and breaking the ice with somebody that we were interested in. The wishful thinker in me was listening to this conversation the entire time and going, oh my god, this is him telling me, this is the sign that he is giving me, that he is also into me, but also too nervous to say anything. And I just kind of froze. I wasn't able to open up to him at the time. I was still pretty nervous. I was still pretty hesitant. So I just let it drop. But I ended up staying up late with my good friend Andrew on my floor and we just both decided that I needed to do this. I needed to break the ice. I needed to go for it. I needed to let my intentions be known, and I needed to just get it all out there. Keep in mind, this is two college teenagers talking at three in the morning, and we were pretty, I don't know, we were just pretty, we were pretty convinced that this was going to work. This then led to an elaborate plan where I found every single blue post-it note I could find and ended up making individual blocks of ice that were all cracked and taping it to his bedroom door, and at the very top, we drew a picture of a chubby little penguin indicating that this was me being the fat penguin and asking him out. And I even wrote a little note on top of it saying, this is me being the fat penguin, signed, 
number four. Sidebar four was my nickname during orientation week. It's another weird story that I don't want to get into right now. But when he woke up, he would have known that the note was from me. And I was so convinced that this grand gesture was going to win me the supposed guy of my dreams. But oh my god, did I not think about the fact that everybody else in our dorm building was going to see this. And as it turns out, he wasn't interested in me that way. When I woke up later that next morning, I passed by his dorm room door and the entire mural had been taken down. It was just so mortifying and it sat there on his door for about eight hours and everybody saw it. It was cute, but it was also just disgustingly embarrassing. And his roommate messaged me on Facebook saying that it was a little weird that I did that. Yep, his roommate had to tell me, not him, his roommate. And everybody on our floor apparently saw this before the boy did, and I, they knew that it was from me, they knew that I was trying to win him over, and I, it just failed miserably. Within the first week of school, I embarrassed myself on a colossal level, and I knew that everybody at school was going to be talking about this, and I should never ever show my face outside of my dorm room for the next four years. I don't know what got into me. Was it the date doctor's words? Was it the fact that I was finally free and on my own at college for the first time? I just, something came over me and something led me to embarrass myself like that and I never forgave myself. I ended up having a conversation with this guy a few days later and we decided to keep things friendly. Apparently he didn't want to get romantically involved with anybody on his floor. He thought it would be weird if things went south and we broke up and I, I could respect that but also oh my god I was just I, I just didn't even want to look him in the face after this. At the time I thought this grand gesture was going to win him over and I didn't think about the fact that maybe he wasn't going to be into me in that way and it was a learning experience, it really was. I'm happy that it happened, I wouldn't take it back. And it helped teach me that no matter how embarrassed you might get, you should always be the fat penguin. Maybe not in that extreme of a sense, but I think that you should let your intentions be clear whenever you're interested in somebody because what if they're also interested in you and in the same boat? If they're not willing to tell you and things are getting weird and things are getting awkward, be the one to step forward and say, yo, I dig you, do you dig me? If not, that's totally cool, but if you do, this could be something awesome. Don't let it fall to the wayside and don't let it slip between your fingers. Try it, and if it doesn't work out, on to the next one. Avoid the grand gestures as much as humanly possible. They will lead to some embarrassing moments. But hey, now I have stories like this to share with you all. I have a lot of really awkward and embarrassing things that happened to me while I was in college that I would love to share with you all. So if you liked this story, if you liked the tale that I weaved, for you here today, give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below telling me about your most awkward rejection experience and we can start a conversation and be here for each other because we're all horrible, awkward human beings and we should embrace it. That's all I got for you guys. Until next time, I will catch you later, nerds. Meh, 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 meh. Stretch it out, stretch it out. What's the, is my mouth making a noise?